It's a necessity. So says the World Health Organization, WHO, which also warns against the risks of not sleeping enough. If we don't take all the rest our bodies need, we can get gastric problems, a considerable increase in appetite, and a worrying imbalance in performance. The who is clear, the human body needs to recover. The amount of sleep a person needs depends on many factors. The World Health Organization makes recommendations on the basis of age. Newborns 16 to 18 hours a day. Preschoolers 11 to 12 hours a day. Schoolchildren 10 hours a day minimum. Teenagers 9 to 10 hours a day. Adults and seniors 7 to 8 hours a day. A study by Brigham Women's Hospital, USA, determined that the ideal time to go to bed is between 2200 hours and 2300 hours hours. They based their estimate on a daily routine that peaks in activity at 9 a.m. and dips around 2200 hours or 10 p.m. If, on a day like this, we are not asleep by 2300 hours, our level of cortisol will not lower as much as should. It may then be difficult to fall asleep at all. For those who find it hard to fall asleep, here are some tips for a better night's sleep. Keep in mind that these recommendations depend on the uses, customs, and hours of light at the place where we live. For one, stay away from the bed during daytime. Getting out of bed should mean becoming active and not returning to bed until bedtime. This way the body will know that it must be activated as soon as you open your eyes. Although it is sometimes complicated, it is recommended to go to bed and wake up at the same time every day even on weekends. Routine is a great ally to get rest. In the evening and especially at night, caffeine is forbidden if you want to sleep properly. The same goes for nicotine, which should be avoided in all its variants, including patches. Exercising regularly helps you sleep much better. However, you should try not to exercise three hours before going to sleep. If caffeine will alter your rest, so will alcoholic beverages and teas. They are not recommended before going to bed. A heavy meal for dinner will make the digestion process take longer than it should, preventing you from sleeping normally. Try to eat light meals and foods that are easily digested. If you can take a break, a nap is never bad, but it has to be very short, about 15 minutes. If you want to relax before going to sleep, you can spend the last half hour of the day taking a bath, reading, or listening to soft music. It's important that the bedroom invites you to sleep. To do this, make it dark, without noise, and with a temperature that is neither cold nor hot. Above all, you should feel comfortable in your own bedroom. If you're going to sleep, avoid anything that might distract you. Computers, mobile phones, tablets. It has been demonstrated that any technological device of this type makes our brain activate and we lose the momentum of sleep. During the day, try to sunbathe as much as you can always with protection. The solar cycle regulates the biological clock as well as the sleep and wakefulness stages. In fact, in summer it is easier to sleep and we notice that we rest better. This is because of the effects of UVA rays on melatonin, the hormone that controls sleep cycles. If you don't fall asleep and it looks like you won't be able to, don't spend more than 20 minutes in bed. Get up and do something to relax. From drinking a glass of water, to going for a walk or reading a book. Whatever it takes to clear your mind and get you to relax. Dairy products are highly recommended to fall asleep, as they promote the formation of serotonin, giving the body a feeling of well-being and relaxation. However, it is advisable that dairy products are consumed in the afternoon rather than the evening. The digestion may take a long time and then actually work against our sleep. Of course, if you are vegan or vegan, forget this advice. The properties of some foods make the nervous system more predisposed to reach the state of sleep. In this respect, calcium and magnesium favor that the nervous connections are predisposed to rest. Nuts like hazelnuts, walnuts or cashews are ideal for this. Well, okay, it is also for something else. But if you don't have to use the bed for tasks like using the computer, eating, or playing video games, then get off of it. Our brains can get confused. Pleasure and sleep must be associated with the bed. The rest, better in other rooms of the house. The more we can avoid sleeping pills, the better.
but if you have no other choice, it is essential that you consult your doctor and that the treatment is as brief as possible. Sleeping pills can create a dangerous dependency. We said naps are fine but, as we said, short. And if you can do it before 1500 hours, it will be much more beneficial. It is advisable to avoid all types of screens, television, mobile, computer, tablet, before going to sleep. In fact, it is best to not touch a screen for at least an hour before you go to sleep. It is strictly forbidden to spend the night doing chores or work. Try not to leave things for the last minute, because after 2200 hours, in the suggested routine of 9 to 2300 hours, your performance diminishes speedily. It could take you four times longer to do things at that time of the day while you also lose hours of rest. If you want to go to bed relaxed and carefree, it's best to make a to-do list just before bedtime. Of course, you should do this with paper and pen, no cell phone. It's a ritual that helps reduce stress and relax the body. We have already commented that the most advisable thing is to wake up and go to bed at the same time every day. But of course, it's tough to get up at 6 o'clock on the weekend. In any case, try not to wake up more than two hours later than usual on Saturdays and Sundays. If you do, you alter the biological clock and it will cost you much more to get up early during the week. Reading is very healthy, it helps you relax, and it is one of the healthiest hobbies. But watch out for the theme of the book you read. If it stresses you out too much, it can cause insomnia. Not to mention those novels that keep you hooked and reading till dawn. Having two or three books on the bedside table at the same time helps to solve these situations. If you set an alarm to get up, why not set it to go to sleep too? On the one hand, you will keep a close watch on your bedtime and, on the other, it will warn you when you don't remember. What's more, mobile sleep applications already include this alarm with your pre-calculated, recommended bedtime.